So my name is Lee, I am an international student of ANU and I study neuroscience. I am uh, intersex and I identify as agender. Yes, I identify as agender and I'm intersex. Sorry about that, yeah. Well, like, growing up, I didn't really have a label. I just told people that I wasn't a girl. And uh, I think when I was a child, I... Um, I observed how boys and girls were treated and I decided that I was a girl and I was like, I wanted to be a boy. But then that changed because I don't identify as a boy. Uh, but more like, you know, and then I guess that labels makes it easier to like, when you're feeling very confused, to know that like other people f feel s similarly to how you feel. Um, so I've never identified as really either a boy or a girl. Uh, once I went to the doctor due to um, amenorrhea and uh, I took some tests and got a pelvic exam and it turned out that I wasn't, like my body wasn't female and um, or male and uh, it produces a lot of androgen and testosterone. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's different. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So what it means is that you... Okay, so it's hard to use public toilets because those are always gendered and it's like gambling, like I can go in a boy's toilet, like I have to look at myself or ask my partner whether he thinks I'd, I'd pass more as a boy or a girl before going into the toilet so I can avoid as much stress as possible and not have people shouting or laughing or stereo pointing and stuff. Um, uh, also another thing of being like ambiguous is that people for some reason when they see me with my partner, whether it's a girl or a boy, they always assume I'm, I'm either gay or a lesbian. So we um, we face the risk of uh, homophobia and that's threatening and it means that I'm not feeling too comfortable expressing affection in public. Um, people stare and they uh, sometimes they, they ask questions very directly like, are you a boy or a girl? And, I don't know, it feels really invasive when a stranger approaches you and wants to know, like, demands to know your gender identity. And it's not even your gender identity they're interested in, it's, it's more like, which box can I put you in, you know. Um, it's, um, it's, uh, I've got a little bit of social anxiety which makes it harder because people pay more attention to me for not fixing, fitting well neatly in either box. Um, having said that, um, I think that in some ways I have a privilege over females because I don't feel vulnerable um, like to rape or to, to being attacked by, uh, by someone on the street. If I'm walking by myself I think okay maybe maybe some crazy homophobe or like crazy person will come but I never think oh my god I'm gonna get raped if I go through the park alone it's I've never been like you know as a kid when I when I when I was more feminine I was faced with this sort of harassment but like then when I when I grew up and my body started becoming more masculine and I started identifying less and less feminine and more ambiguous and uh, it's just stopped. Like, I don't get catcalled on the streets. I I'm not told to smile to look pretty. Um, 
my looks aren't valued as much as uh, those as a female. I'm not expected to be good looking for the pleasure of others, while females have to face this. So in some way, I'm privileged, though like I also have some counter effects to this. Alright, so my partner is fantastic. Uh, I love him very much. He's extremely supportive, and uh, and I feel I just feel so comfortable being myself around him. Uh, my family, on the other hand, um, I would have expected them when I when I came out to them. Like they've always known that I wasn't that I didn't feel comfortable uh, being uh, assigned as female, and. Um, but I also like, I'm also not a boy, so it's very, very hard for my parents to get it. My sister said to me that if um, it was anti feminist for me to uh, not identify as a girl, because now all, the, all my fights, all my struggles, they weren't for, uh, for the good of other females anymore, and she thought it was selfish, and I couldn't understand it. I couldn't really talk to her. It's like, um,. Misgendering is, is a thing that keeps happening all the time and it feels like I have to come out every time I see them because they live in another continent and I don't see them that often and every time it feels like I have to have that talk again and it's exhausting. Um, having said that, I you know, I, I, I don't get like... Though it is, it sucks that I get misgendered and it feels like they don't accept my identity, I didn't get abused because of it. I didn't get thrown out of a house because of it. And I didn't get cut off because of it. So, in that way, my family and friends, you know, I'm pretty well off. Oh yeah, and my friends, most, almost all of them, they're, they understand. So that's good. Um, my main issues and concerns are that um, the world is made, it's constructed on the binary. Whenever you fill a medical form, uh, whenever you go to the toilet, whenever you apply for a job, whenever you... Like everything, everything, Some for some reason people just have to know. Do you, which box are you going to tick? And Oh, especially competition, it's been really hard for me to compete. Uh, I used to compete in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but um, I can't really... Like, they're gendered competitions, and it's really hard to get past that. Um, I just really wish that gender and sex and wouldn't be as salient to society as they are. Like, they're, they're treated like they're the main defining feature of a person, and I think that's absurd. I wish that the lines were more blurred so that I could become a part of everyone and not be an outsider anymore. Um, well, I'm a terrible person to ask advice. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll tell you that people might not accept you, but you shouldn't build your idea of yourself on what other people say, because the most important thing is that you accept yourself, you know who you are, you feel comfortable with who you are. And um, having said that, you know, like when people like me, I, I'm a very ambiguous, I fall on a very wide spectrum, like intersex people could be cisgender or trans, so Agender people could be like more feminine or more masculine than I am, so like each experience is different, but I know that what we have in common is that we're a minority and we're going to be treated as such, and it's, it's easy for us to fall through the how is it called? The cracks. Yeah. Hmm. Let's fall through the grades. And so just keep believing in yourself, because it, it's if you do that and you find people who accept you as you are, so that life is going to be so much better.